in, in that successful run? Yeah, sure. Hold on one second. My headphones aren't working. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yep, I can. Okay. All right, there we go. I don't know where my, my sign was going somewhere else. <clears throat> okay, sorry. You want to look at the, the format, the, the results? Is that what it was? Yeah. All right. There we go. Let's see. You probably want the... Okay, there, let's see. Regex for it. But here's so there's the... just one. There's just one output in this particular file. Uh, sorry, in this job. Yeah, so it looks like 600. What did this one do? Wait, should be out. So it's a six, it looks like 600. But, oh, no, no, there's 100. Okay. So it's 100. Yeah. So there's 100. And then let's see what else. Uh, I think it's just one. Yeah, it is. It's just one. But hold on. That's not all. So there's this one. This one has a little bit different instead of this one. Well, let's hold on. Do you have any questions about this? So it's just one. It's just 100, one output. Uh, no, what I was wondering is um, our, my tool right now, it scrapes for both VMI and uh, VM together. And then, uh, so the regex filtering for this one will be a little different. However, I think it will still work because we have recently proposed to change it in the values. So it will mm -hmm. find the correct line item 2511. So I think that will work here. Um, the only difference is in the code path where it should not, if it is this job, it should not look for the second one and, and fail gracefully. If, if I can handle that, then we, sh we should be able to crunch these uh, jobs as well. Okay. All right, let's look at the second one. Now this one, uh, I don't remember if it does two runs, but it, it's, it should have more than 100. So this is, let's see, 400. Looks like it's just the 400. Yeah. Yeah, so this one's fine. Here we go. So the same kind of thing. Looks like the same regex, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. and and then the other question I had is, how would you propose to format uh, these output? So right now it's very simple. Right now all we have is a weekly VMI and a weekly VM folder. With these new files coming in, I think we should put it in like density tests folder and then continue to segregate. Well, with this test, segregation at VM resource level does not matter, right? Uh, do you anticipate in future we are going to add uh, VMIs and sorry, VMs and uh, instance type tests for the density test. We could. I I, I wouldn't count that out. Uh, like not happening. I I think I think it's pretty reasonable that we do something like that. Okay. Yeah. Then then we can uh, add a density test folder and then. Uh, if within that 100, 400, 600, and then within that uh, resources, VM, I, VM, and instance type, and then those will host, host the charts for this. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, that's good. It's good to see this is back up. And yeah. So we'll, when you have whatever the, um, the regex for that, we can review it. Okay, let's go to your charts that you've generated from the last two weeks. So anything from here so that we should focus on? Uh, no, just wanted to give you 
um, a heads up that now the VMI results are actually uh, VMI results. And I was hoping we can um, do one or two test runs to you know um, verify this is indeed um, as expected. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is the the list call on the virtual machine. Well, yeah, that one. So if you can scroll a little bit down, some more, maybe half a page. Yeah, this one, the patch VMI count. This is very sporadic. Um, I wonder why such a big uh, spread across the graph. To look at most other charts, it's not as bad as this one. I don't know, any theories? No, I actually, uh, the regex thing got, took more time than anticipated. So I don't know exactly, but this is something you'll have to check out. Um, one thing I can, I can think about is that if the patch call fails because of the older resource version, that's why that, that could lead to more patch calls. So like all the bottom ones are passing in the first try and then the top ones are um, taking more than one try. But I don't know if that's a valid theory because the ones at the bottom, they're like halfway. For example, the, if we are running um, 100 VMIs, then 40 or 50 patch calls don't make much sense. Like there is no trend with that. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, thinking too, the trend is bizarre. There's no relationship to the number of creations we did. Like this one's got clearly two to one with some failures. Right, there's like never less than 200. It should, well, it is one, but it should be almost never less than 200. And that's two to one, but here, right? Like you have 35. I don't even understand that. It's, that yeah, would be so like I as think... if one third of the, the VMIs got patches. But I don't even understand that. Yeah, so either something is wrong with the monitoring there or something is wrong with uh, the patch calls. It, this sounds a um, little bit like we need to spend time digging into it. Yeah, I mean, we do get some of that are clearly one-to-one. -one. I mean, we see a lot of them that are one-to-one, -one, but we also right, we get some strange ones. So there is sort of a trend up here. Just, it's just these yeah. ones. These ones. Yeah, I think this helps us find the uppercase, right? So there is nothing beyond one, more than one call per VMI. Yeah. Uh, so that that's helpful. Uh, beyond that, it, it, this graph is noisy. Yeah. All right, let's go to the second one. Anything, anything? Uh, here's another. <laughs> yeah. A, a noisy list. Well, well, this one I can understand because it's list. Um, it might be a time-based thing or something. Sorry, okay. it's list on nodes. Um, so. Yeah, this was the one where we were kind of hoping if we figure out what it is. We actually could look um, here and see what we get for the trend for our longer running one. So let's say so this is list, there's a list node. Oops. Two. Okay, well, <laughs> interesting. So that might not, I guess I would expect this to be higher on this longer running job, it's only two. Yeah. Weird. Okay, I mean, this is one where we can figure out like as we get as you start scraping this data, maybe the trend line will emerge. Maybe this is just an outlier for this um, in this job. I don't know. Uh, these are kind of low too. So okay. I guess we'll see when we, when we get the data. We'll see what the trend line shows. I guess so our expectation is that we'd expect this to be higher than than these like four hundred VMIs versus one hundred. We'd expect to be a little higher. Yeah, I guess it's maybe it's constant. Yeah, that's, I mean, we, I don't truly really know. I think we should not be listing nodes at all. 
honestly, because list and watch call should only start at the beginning of the uh, whatever controller is watching for it. And then it should cache all the entries and work from that cache. So seeing it here in the first place is a little bit um, surprising for me. Yeah, let's see what the trend shows. Cause I wonder, so the dedicated cluster might be telling us that we're like, it could be just, this is noise from the background and uh, I don't know other jobs sharing the cluster. And maybe this is from, uh, you know, the dedicated cluster, maybe we see a lower, maybe we see a more consistent value of, you know, maybe it starts getting a trend of like a low, like around this, maybe around two or something, or I don't know, like I mean, we need more data, but that's just, like that could explain something that could mean that maybe it's just noise, but we'll need to see, we'll need to see what we get when we start scraping that. Okay, let's see what else, flat trend lines, that's good. Get nodes, I mean, that's another weird one. There's no correlation here to the number of BMIs. We still don't know this one, right? This is three, it looks like three to one. We don't, we don't have an explanation for this one. No. Well, it's it's a get call, right? So I mean, it's low hanging fruit. It might not yeah. uh, be very expensive. Yeah, I see here um, the patch call being sporadic again. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is coming from the underlying. Um, oh, I did looking at the in link by any chance sorry the link in the top bar it shows vmi should be looking at vm right we looked at the vmis earlier yeah i went to this one i went to the second one. Oh, oh, they're both vm my i made a mistake you should remove yeah let's go to vm okay Okay, so here's the here's the yeah list. Uh, what else? That's kind of yeah all over the place. This should be a hundred, pretty consistently. Yes, this should be very. Um, yeah, can you note this down as an action item? We definitely need to track down this one. So create BMI count person. So our trend line puts us around 60. <laughs> it's like all over the place. Uh, sorry. Yeah, that makes no sense. It's like we're just missing a lot of things. I mean, I don't even know how we get zero. I don't even know how we get that. Right. Yeah. Um, interestingly, the patch calls for VMIs are holding up nicely. Yeah, these look good. This is this looks like we've got a good trend here. About two to one. It looks like so this this could be like a few failures and then and then we kind of oh you know what actually sorry to cut you, but what I was thinking is that um so this patch VMI calls it includes the patches from the VMI controller as well as the VM controller. And the variation you are seeing uh, comes from the VMI controller, the older chart we were looking at. So if you theoretically, if the patch for VMI count in VM controller remains constant, then the only thing going up and down is the previous chart. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, because uh, you you look at some of the uh, 
once on the lower end of the graph it's like 100 and what uh, 25 or something that's like 137 is what i got on one of them here yeah so that that one is yeah okay Ten to one updates looks like that. I think it's been constant for a little while. Okay. Yeah, I compared that update call with the VMI controller, uh, and the VMI is at eight hundred, pretty constant. So, I think uh, my understanding is that this call is split into two: eight calls by the VMI controller and two calls by the VM on top. That gets okay. us to 10. I see. So then it takes, so it's two update calls. So if you're managing with VMs, you get eight more updates than we get. No, the other way around. The, the VMI itself has eight update calls. If you're managing with VM, you get- Oh, you get more. two, you get two more is with VM. Yeah. This is what you're saying. Oh, I see, I see, yes. okay. Okay, cool. It seems reasonable. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that makes sense because I mean, you think about all the number of phase changes we have to do, that, that makes sense. Okay, so like in terms of, so like the way we classify this in, in terms of scale, it's like we get two more. If we had a value for update calls, it would be whatever plus two times the number of VMs, and that would be the our scale number versus the number of VMIs, which would be whatever the, the base is, which is eight. Yeah. Safer. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So trade off we are ma making in managing with with VM controller is just additional to update call. Yeah. Okay. That's a good one. That when we talk to the Kubernetes six scale, that they have some equations to model a few things. That's where when we we um, I'm hoping we can get some bunch out of the knowledge share where, however, they have their calculations, we can use some of it to do yeah. some modeling for, for what we have and that should be, should be helpful for us to do estimates. Okay. All right, that's all I have for these. Uh, I think Galay, I don't know if there's anything else. I think that was, I could cover um, it. No, not regarding these two graphs. Uh, since Lugo is here, do we want to talk briefly about that artifact directory problem? It yeah. will just be repeating, but I think we can get some more discussion. Yeah, sure. Which is the is here? Um, yeah. Is this yeah, okay. These two actually. So you need this, uh we haven't merged this yet, right? So, yeah, I I yeah. need to spend time on this. This is not the one where I need help. I mean, this one is very clear. The second so, point second one. Uh, yeah, the density test versus the end-to-end -end test. Yeah, if you can open up the links for both of them. Okay. Yeah, so the artifacts there. Yeah. Um, so my question here is that, what configuration exactly enables that artifact directory in the, in the pro job? So if we look at the other tab, uh, the density cluster, if that artifact directory is missing. So I, on the thread in Kubert dev, I got a couple of uh, uh, data points as to you can, we can populate the artifact directory, but that is just an environment variable for the test. So I still don't know if it is the one that enables this artifact directory. I have a link to documentation for Pro, where the environment variables are explained. They are basically the artifacts is the one you are looking for, which you indicate to Pro, hey, everything which is written to this path, I need to be export, I need to export. Um, I think we set it on the job, but I would need to check 
if it's, yeah. it's true. Yeah, Lugo, I think you are right. Um, I think we set it up. It, it might be good to verify that. But my understanding is that this environment variable is just uh, exposed to the jobs so that they can write the output in a particular directory. So my that that plumbing might already be in place. The the question is that does this environment variable also enable that directory being populated, or is there some other configuration? Um, I mean, the test suite needs to populate it, right? Or you mean no, no, no. Uh, that the test populates it and writes it, but it's just not put it in the uh, in the S three bucket. Ah, then that's that's, that's my bug. understanding. Yeah, that, yeah. That, then that's a bug from Pro. Pro. Okay. So, uh, is is it like, uh, is it all the time, or does it happen only from time no, to time? All the time. All the time. Okay. So. Okay. Ah, I see. So that's a uh, density. So that's periodic. Uh, give me a second. I will have a look on the pro uh, definition. Sure. Um, uh, Ryan, while Lubo searches for that, um, can you go to the density test that we walked through here? So in this uh, output build dot text, can you search for artifacts? Yeah, there it is. And are we sure that the uh, so we perf we run the perf scale test sh right? Um, are we sure we we are using the the logs artifacts directory there? Yeah, um, Ryan, if you can uh, scroll to the uh, place where we log the audit output, the values, I think it was 2511. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah, no, no, because this, this is, uh, yeah, but the path was not, not the same, right? There was prefix of out underscore mm -hmm. the out. Yeah, it looks like a different path. Well, so logs artifact, and this is out artifacts. Yeah, oh. exactly. OK. Uh, artifacts. So yeah, all we need go. to change is this, the audit? Yeah, right, yeah, the writing the results. So whatever does produce those. OK. Yes, yeah, so it's the, OK, so we just need to change the script then. So use log, logs artifacts. Um, or we, yeah, or we need to change this to out artifacts. Yeah, so that, that will be it. I mean, um, yeah. Not sure if you, if we use, do we dockerize it or containerize it, this script? Probably not, but I am I'm looking at it. I don't see anything like that. It, no, that uh, I don't think so. So I think the the place the environment variable for this output file is the audit. Um, can you search for cap caps uh, o a u d i t? I think you'll find. Uh, oh, lots of things. Ah, okay. I I can see it right now. Um, let me actually open it in in, uh, in the depth browser so I can share with you. So, and we override the artifact, um, the artifact uh, variable here. So that, that's a problem. <clears throat> uh, so I think that the simple, simple thing is just to remove the prefix of out, and that's it. Or or you may want to actually override the config on the pro, whatever works for you. You're saying this is uh, the problem that we're overriding? Yeah, 
I see. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So the line number 34 gives us the audit result um, directory. So that contains the output out underscore audit. Okay, so I think we just need to skip line 32. That should be it. Oh, I see. Okay. No, use the whatever you set. Uh, okay, I get it. You use log artifacts. Okay. Yeah, so we just remove okay. this line and it should work. You like that? Okay. But yeah, maybe you use it. Not sure why it was used like this, but maybe maybe there is a reason. So just keep an eye on it. Yeah, I'll try it out. I um another thing that um, bugged me in trying this um, test is that I've not actually gotten any of the perf scale tests to run in my environment. Hey, my hardware seems to be uh, the limiting factor. Do you guys um, are you guys able to run even with like five VMs or something where the test runs end to end in, in the local environment? With five VMs, mm -hmm. uh, I haven't tried it in a while, but when we originally did it, yeah. But hey, you have I to mean, you have to have really really small VMs. Like, are you using the cluster up? Yeah, yeah, you had to use, like really tiny ones. I mean, you, you can modify the the memory, the default memory we use for the nodes for the QVCI nodes, but it depends on your hardware, right? I, for example, me, I have 64 gigabytes, so I'm pretty okay. But yeah, I think my hardware is beefy enough. It's just that I uh, I am using the default configuration. I think I'll have to change that to uh, get def the test. Yeah, definitely for the performance job, we use uh, different values. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a good point. I'll try that out. Okay. Okay, I think, all right, so we just need to, um, that's all we need. This is easy, we just need to remove this line. Okay, cool. Okay, and that should do it. <clears throat> all right, let's go to this uh, presentation. So this is, um, what uh when we go to next week to the upstream six scale this is what the slides i want to talk through so uh does everyone have an, an invite to that upstream six scale calendar it's like it's on thursday afternoons so it'll be next thursday it's every other week so on, on thursday afternoon well eastern time i don't know <laughs> so actually it might be it's like i think it's um I think it's uh, so it's let me see. So it would be like um, like twenty one hundred UTC or something. It's later than this. This is um, I think it's like four. It was like six hours after this time. So if you don't have it, just join. Uh, grab the um, or locate the invite if you want to attend. I don't know if it's gonna. You're gonna be able to do it, Lubo. I think it's gonna be late for you, being in your time zone. I will try to, but yeah, I think it's eight or nine. Of my yeah, it's gonna, yeah, I, I think it's gonna be it's probably gonna be late for you. But anyway, so I'll just give you the um, what the slides you want to talk about with um, with them. So this is so basically, you just want to go over what we do in in our group and some of what some of the results we've seen. So uh, this is our mission. So we we maintain our own API server scheduler. We have workloads that are independent of, of Kubernetes. And so we should have our own performance standards, tools, and best practices. So our focus with measurement is to leverage existing tooling as much as possible. So that means Prometheus, we have, um, we focus on two main metrics that give us a lot of our data, right? We've got phase transition times and we've got the client go HTTP calls to a Kubernetes API server. And the two things we focus on is like we want that to be able to measure from our laptop and then a dashboard. And so we have phase transition times, which is we basically took that idea of a creation timestamp and deletion timestamp and add more granular phases. 
and we update the status with it. And we do it when we ever we change these phases. And what this does is allows us to make great stuff like this, which is valuable for from seeing how virtual machines are performing and uh, in, a, in our clusters and uh, create a bunch of um, expectations around those runtimes and those different phase transitions. And then same with the client go HTTP calls. So we have, um, we should be able to catch PRs that increase the HTTP calls and we should be able to measure it. So we want to filter for these PRs and and catch them and and comment on them. And so in this case, like we've got the ones that Alay had caught earlier, which was the two changes we had to finalize with the finalizer change to the VMIs and the controller revision, which affected the patch counts that we have for VMs that are managing VMIs. And so our future goals with that we want to collaborate with this upstream six scale group is we want um, is that we have a virtual machine object. It's made up of a lot of things. We've got pod, PVCs, networks, and other things. There's just too many variables for us to measure and isolate performance and scale for just the virtual machine object. It's too large. There's too many things. So how do we isolate these things? How do we isolate the virtual machine? You know, is there a way we can get more details, uh, our detailed phases for the different pieces that make up the virtual machine? that Kubernetes is primarily responsible for. So things like PVC attachment times, network attachment time, pod phase beyond creation timestamp. So all the things that basically applying the idea that we have for phase transition timestamps to other objects in Kubernetes, maybe we don't need to post them on the actual object themselves, but like perhaps we can have a way to post this in Prometheus so that this is actually, actually measurable for us. Um, so more than just that creation timestamp, you know, it could be when PVC is attached. Like we know when this is, the, the controllers know when this is, we just need to mark when it happens and, 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 and expose it. So same with any other things that could make up possibly a, a virtual machine, we wanna, we wanna expose those things. So that's the ask, I think that's the last slide I've got, yeah. So that's what I want to cover with the uh, with the group, and then hopefully we can dive into discussion on some of these things. That, I mean, I'm, I'd like to get a lot of questions from them on how this works, how this works, and we can sort of talk through this and how we use it, and so on and so forth, and maybe get some dialogue to eventually get to a point where they're interested in in working with us on these things and maybe a design or something. So, um, and this looks great. Uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, upstream Kubernetes has, uh, <clears throat> they have deprecated the use of phase um, in, in things like uh, pod phases and stuff. They are leaning towards uh, conditions. So um, I don't know if seeing phases here will trigger that discussion points in people. But if you want to um, avoid that chance, you can use um, conditions or, or something similar of that nature. Okay, we we'll call pod conditions. And actually, conditions are better because you have also the timestamp, so you also know where you reach the condition, right? So for well, example, so the the, the only thing is though, if we're if we're going to go this route, like pods have. So if, if upstream is moving towards conditions, then what, what you know, they're just gonna tell us that hey, we're moving toward conditions, you need to wait for that. Is that what is that what the answer mm -hmm. is here? No, I is think it... so the way this will the way I see this happening is that um upstream, so let's take an example of pod, right? Pod has a lot of different agents that are reconciling pod status. And some of the information is sent out in conditions, some is sent down in events. So for example, the PVC, whether it's attached or not, it's, a, it's an event. Whether network is attached or not, it's an event. So that is the low level detail. So what, what I envision is that all of these things will turn out to be a kubelet uh, metric that gets exposed along with that uh, SLO of end-to-end -end 
uh, running time that you were sharing in last uh, call. Okay. So it might not be all in the object uh, status itself. It will just be metrics that are collected across various components that help us build this timeline. Okay, that's yeah, that's what I, we're looking for. So if it's yeah, yeah uh, if it's I, all I wanted to avoid is that someone telling us that like no, like we're we're it, someone else is working on this because then it's just a dead end for us. Like it's just going to be so they're just it's going to be unhelpful. I mean, you know what I mean? Because they're going to basically what they're doing is just passing us off. So the hope is that what well, whatever this is like, it's just to convince them that this is a very simple idea, like. It's the equivalent of a a creation timestamp that we want to have for all of these objects. So it's at least I'm hoping where we can sort of take the conversation is that we just want a bunch of these creation timestamps, but we want them not be about creation timestamps. We want them to be about more specific. Yeah. Things. Yeah, I think the way I see it is if you you need an ability to break down that creation to running into much more granular things. So you can identify what's causing problems, right? Uh, yeah. That's, yeah, if you can capture that, I think that will be a great open-ended question at the end. Okay, yeah, maybe I can pose it as sort of a, a question instead of like just a, uh, well, I have a question here, but maybe I can make it as a little bit more um, specific because I think that's sort of the thing is we want, our goal out of this would be to, to basically to have like a cap or something or a, or some sort of PRs, you know, that are that are generated at the end of this. Not, um, you know, that that would be the goal. So, yeah, if we can get the conversation that direction, I think that that would be the ideal thing. So, yeah, maybe we just need the right question here at the end. Okay. All right, sounds good, guys. I think this is um. So yeah, this is what we we'll use for the um, for the discussion, and hopefully this can get us some places. Get us started at least. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Good. All right. Are there any other items for today we want to discuss? No, not from my side. Okay. I think we're all set then. Okay. All right, everyone. It's far, then. Okay.